Hello, my name is Sinead. I am a doctor of acupuncture and Chinese medicine and a yoga and qigong teacher. And today I'm going to teach you some post-workout qigong tai chi inspired exercises. At the end of my tai chi class, my instructor would always guide us through a series of relaxation movements to help relax the muscles, calm the nervous system, slow down the heart rate, and collect the energy at the end of class. So if you've done a workout, for me personally, I just did the 20 minute Sculpt Society workout with Megan Roop. I'll link that below if you're interested. Um, but I often do this after a workout of any kind. Uh, it can be a Sculpt workout, it can be running, it can be boxing, that's my other favorite right now. Or after a dance class. So if you're a dancer, I highly recommend doing this routine after you finish class. It's easy to forget how important recovery is, but in Chinese medicine we have the yin and the yang. The yin is the passive, the receptive, and the yang is the active, the energetic. And when we don't give our body recovery, active recovery, then we can actually slow our progress in the long run. So if you want to work on your recovery, I suggest doing this video at least three times a week after your workouts and see how it goes. So let's get started and please let me know how it goes for you. Please let me know if you have any questions. We're gonna begin with a breathing exercise. Inhale, squeeze your body tight, lift your shoulders, hold your breath in at the top for eight. Two, one, exhale slowly, releasing tension. Inhale, squeeze, squeeze every muscle, even your face, even your butt, your hands, your feet. Hold for eight. Tense, tense, tense. Exhale, release. Drop into the ground. Last time, inhale, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Hold the breath in. Make yourself more tense. Exhale, let it go. And sway your body right and left. Let go of any tension there. And start to twist your waist, relaxing your hips, your spine. Lift your opposite heel as you turn your torso. Letting go of any tension in your back, your jaw, your neck. And slow it down. Come back to the center. Step your feet underneath your hips, relax your arms loose by your sides, and begin to bounce your legs. Feel your feet sinking into the ground, maybe imagine warm sand or warm mud, and just sigh, shake off stress, tension, any feelings of heaviness and fatigue from your workout, just let it go. Done for the day. <sighs> and let every part of you shake. So the shaking helps with muscle recovery. It helps to relax your nervous system. It also stimulates lymphatic flow. So it's good for your immune system. Shake, maybe close your eyes, make noise. <sighs> and just let go of your stress. <sighs> Letting go of tension in the hands, wrists, elbows, shoulders, jaw, inside your face, chest, belly, hips, thighs, shaking off tension in your lower legs, feet, and shaking just a little longer. Enjoy, be silly for three, two, and one. Now we shake the limbs right and left. So again, this is just to help the body recover, letting go of any tension we might have created in our joints. It's also just silly, so it's good for the mind, good for the heart. Take a deep breath in and drop. Again, shaking. Take a deep breath in and drop. Good, one more. Shake off the stress and drop. Inhale, reach your arms up, 
back and down. Widen your legs. Relaxing your shoulder joints. Letting go of any tension you might have created in your jaw, neck, and shoulders. Last one. Good, go the other way. Use your long, deep breathing to help recover your heart rate. And relax. Now just the shoulders up, back, and sigh. Stretching open the chest. You can bend your knees as you sigh. Dropping your weight down into the ground. Oftentimes when we're really going hard, we can hold ourselves away from the ground. So just let your body weight drop. Last two. Last one. And relax. Step your feet closer, reach one hand out, drop your head, spread your fingers out wide. You can change the angle of your arm to change where you feel the stretch. Maybe move your chin around and breathe into the side of your neck. One more deep breath in and out. Good, relax the arm, lift the head, other side. Breathing deeply into the side of the neck, spread your fingers out, straight elbow. Move your chin if you'd like. If you're very tired, you can do this sitting down as well. Last breath. Good. Come back to the center. Stretching the spine. Inhale. Reach up. Press through your feet. Press through your hands. Exhale through your mouth and separate your hands. Float your arms down. Soft bend in the knees. Relax every joint as you lower your arms. Inhale, reach the arms up and decompress the spine. Exhale, sigh. Floating your body in space, consciously relaxing every joint. Last time, inhale, stretch your waist, stretch your spine, stretch your eye. And sigh like you're floating in a pool of water. Good, moving on to the lower body. Start with the calves. Put one heel out, bend your back knee, and lean forward. If this is enough for you, stay here, or reach down and grab your chin, or maybe your toes, and pull your forehead towards your toes, or just lean your body weight forward. For 10, eight, Six, breathing up and down the back of the thigh for two. Stretch a little deeper and slowly come up. Other side, leaning back into your hip, flexing the toes. Again, you can stay here or go lower for 10. Stretching open the calf can really help with plantar fasciitis. So if you suffer from that, consider stretching your calves for at least a few minutes after your workout. Last deep breath. And inhale back up. Release tension in your hips. Make a big circle. Knees can bend slightly. Feet can be pretty wide apart. Just make sure that they're parallel to one another. This helps open your lower back. Good, go the other way. Let go of any tension in your waist, hips. Especially if you're a runner or a cyclist, this, is, this one can feel really good after those movements. Good, come back to center. We stretch the front of the hip. So option one, step your foot back 
and press your heel into the ground. Same leg that's back, reach that arm up and lean towards your bent knee. Make sure your back leg is all the way straight, not bent, and you'll get a deeper stretch in the front of that hip. You can also choose to put your back knee on the ground and lean into it. It's a little more intense. Last deep breath. And release. Switch sides, step it back, reach, and lean. It helps to squeeze your butt on the back leg. That will send your pelvis more forward and you'll get a deeper stretch in the front of that hip. This stretches open the psoas, which we use a lot in running or if you're a dancer, we use this muscle all the time to lift the leg. Good, release. Now we're gonna do the hitting practices. So hitting helps to stimulate the proprioceptors on the body. My doctoral research was on proprioception and fascia, and proprioceptors tell our body and our joints where we are in space so we don't get injured. So the hitting practices that we're about to do are from Qigong, and they can really help prevent injury by waking up your spatial awareness. They also help to break up the lactic acid in the muscles. So if you have a theragun, this is what you use the theragun for. You can also use your fists. So we'll start with the belly. Bring your hands into loose fists and hit up the right side and down the left side. This is the direction of your intestines, your large intestine. <sighs> so it helps to wake up digestion as well. Knocking out any tension from holding your abdomen in during your workout. If you did an ab workout like me, your abs are sore. <laughs> Good, then to the center of the chest, your thymus gland, part of your immune system. Sighing, <sighs> really good for releasing stress in the chest. Good, and then the top of your lungs, like King Kong, <sighs> knocking off the dust in your lungs, <sighs> breaking up any mucus. Really good for if you did any chest exercises. Good, now the top of the shoulder. Just give it a nice banging. <laughs> this area of our body gets so, so tense, especially when we're pushing really hard. So you can spend a little extra time here. Then with your loose fist, go down the outside of your arm and feel the hitting inside your bones. Your bones come up the inside of the arm, produce your red and white blood cells, so they're very important for total body health. One more time, down your arm. Feel the bones vibrating. Palm, other side of the arm. And down the side of your waist with an open palm, slapping. <sighs> this helps initiate sighing. It's good for relaxing the diaphragm, the muscle underneath the lungs. And just pause for a second and notice the difference between your two arms. Close your eyes. <sighs> One should feel like it has a bit more life. So let's even it out, top of the shoulder. You can also bounce while you do this if you want a little more shaking. Knocking out tension and stress in the shoulder and down the arm. <sighs> Stay relaxed in your hitting hand as well. Feel the vibration all the way to your bones through your muscles. And one more time, down the outside of your arm, up the inside, and down the side of your waist. <sighs> These hitting exercises can also be great to do before meditation. It wakes up your body and kind of relaxes your whole mind. Now down the front of the body, across the scalp, just use your open palms cupped like this and go across the scalp. This one's really good for mental tension as well. If you can't get out of your head, ugh. good. And now we go to the lower back. So again, open palms and just slap your lower back. This is really good for lower back tension and also to help your kidneys and your adrenal glands, which are really working hard after a workout. And 
then hold your hands over your lower back, stand up slowly, knees slightly bent, close your eyes, take a deep breath into your hands. Consciously relax your lower back, feel the warmth there. One more time, breathe into your hands and your back. Consciously relax the lower back muscles. And relax, hitting the sacrum now, the triangular bone at the base of the spine, just above your tailbone. Take your fists and tap on the sacrum. This bone is very important. We call it the qi pump and qi gong. And the nerves come out to the reproductive organs. It's also very important for the movement of your whole spine. So when you relax the sacrum, it can help your whole nervous system. Now go to the glutes. Again, if you did a glute workout like I did, you're gonna be very sore here. So just the sides of the hips. Keep breathing. This one can be intense. Good, now we're gonna do a slapping motion. So with open hands, slap your butt and slap down the backs of your thighs. All the way to the backs of your knees, calves. So slapping from your glutes all the way down the backs of your legs, knees, calves, backs of the heels. And one more time down the backs of the legs. This is the bladder meridian in Chinese medicine. Good, now we do the sides of the legs. This is the gallbladder meridian. Also the IT band. And now we do the tops of the legs, stomach meridian. This is also to encourage the energy to go down. When we work out, we get a lot of heat in our chest and our head. So we wanna encourage the energy to go down and into the ground. Now we're gonna hit a special acupuncture point for energy recovery. Find the little dimple in your knee and then do one hand width below that, close to the shin bone. So here's the shin bone. Go to the outside of the shin bone and hit here. We'll do about 36 times. You can do this sitting as well if it's more comfortable. And the Chinese name for this point is Zusan Li, which means walk three miles. So when you hit this point, they say you can walk three more miles. My teacher in China said when you hit this point, it also means you can eat more food. So that's fun. <laughs> Good, and relax. And just notice how your body feels. Maybe sway side to side for a moment, close your eyes. And just notice the new circulation in your arms, your legs, your torso. Good, so now we're gonna smooth all of that out and do the closing movements. On our skin, we have all different types of receptors. So we have a receptor that responds to pinching, hitting, slapping. And so this last one is for the lymphatic circulation aspect of the immune system, and it's a gentle touch on the skin. So you can actually affect your internal organs and your nervous system by working with different receptors on the skin. You can even affect your spinal cord and realize if you have a problem in your spinal cord by looking at sensitivity in different aspects of the skin. They're called dermatomes. So we start with the legs. It's called descending yang, ascending yin. So remember the yang is like our get up and go, and the yin is our relax, cool down, and feel nourished. We move our hands to our lower back. Exhale down the back of your thighs, brushing the skin across the toes, and then inhale, sweep your hands up the inner thighs, the yin meridians, across the lower belly, to the back, exhale down, feel your skin, smooth it out, inhale up the inner thighs, softening the muscles, the flesh, last time exhale down the back of the legs, inhale up the thighs, go all the way up now to the chest and open through the heart, palms facing up. So it's like you're drawing a fountain of energy up from your pelvis into your chest. This time, inhale all the way up from your pelvis through the center line of your body, out through the top of your head. 
And imagine a shower coming down, maybe cold rain washing over your skin, out through the top of your head, cooling your body down. Do that one more time. Inhale. Imagine drawing water up through the center of your body and out through the top of your head. A cool rain falling down over your skin, relaxing your body. <sighs> now we do the arms down the outside and up the inside. Exhale down, smoothing out the muscles, smoothing out the skin. Inhale up. And if it helps, you can imagine somebody else touching your skin. So make it feel really good, really relaxing, really nourishing. And exhale down the other arm. Inhale up. Exhale down. Inhale up. Last time, brush off any tension. And now we do three down the front of the body. Exhale, face down to the belly. <sighs> Wiping away the sweat. <sighs> and across the hair, down the back of the neck, across your back, down to your belly. Run your fingers through your hair, smooth out the energy in your face, neck, Lower back, last time. Releasing any tension in your back. Good, now down the sides of your body, sides of your face, torso to the belly. You can again use the visual of a cool rain falling down your body, relaxing you. Last time down the sides of the face, And a final closing movement. Inhale, reach up. Imagine grabbing starlight, fresh energy. Flip your palms down, exhale through the mouth. And slowly travel your hands across your body. Imagine the light filling every cell, pushing out any remaining tension, heat, inflammation, stress in your body, in your mind. We do that two more times. Inhale, reach up for fresh energy. Imagine light streaming through your fingertips, hands. Exhale, bring it down. Release tension, inflammation. Last time. Inhale. Gathering oxygen, fresh energy. Exhaling the stale energy, release it down to the ground, out through the feet. Feel every cell fresh, lit up, re-energized. Sweep your hands across your lower abdomen, step your feet together. Take a deep breath in and a big sigh. <sighs> Focus your attention in your lower abdomen, calm your mind. Calm your breath, calm your heart, and feel that all your energy is returning to you, to your center. Feel the power coming back into your body, like plugging into a socket, plug into your lower belly center, center of vitality. And inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, big sigh. <sighs> Inhale, reach up. And sigh. <sighs> Last time, really let go of any remaining stress and tension. Ugh. Great job. This is the end of practice. Let me know how that went for you guys. I hope that this helps you recover more quickly from your workouts and just feel better both mentally and physically. Working out, remember, is a stress, so everything in moderation and just add recovery to your routine. And I encourage you, if you have time, to take one to five to 10 minutes to just lay down, and that will really help your body to solidify all the changes you've 
made during your workout. Just like when we sleep at the end of the day, when we lay down and rest at the end of our workout, we can actually extract more from it because we're giving ourselves that mini recovery period for our brain to make new connections, for our body to cool down, and for our heart to relax. So again, thank you for practicing with me, and I'll see you next time.